uh, in last week's lab, uh, you created uh, symbols, right, which are objects. Um, we didn't do this, but you can, once you create a symbol or you have an object, you can actually apply certain effects, if you will. Um, some of them are a little more prominent than other ones. Uh, so you can add, uh, apply color effects. You can do blending modes, which is pretty similar to what you would do with uh, in Photoshop. And you can apply filters. The filters act more like layer styles, I would say, than that they're not like filters like you would see in Photoshop. So just as an example of how that would work, um, you can see here, let me make this smaller so we can see the, um, I have these two objects, right? So basically we use the green one here. If you go to the properties panel object, you'll see you have color effects. Um, so you can do brightness, for example, and you can make it lighter or darker. You can uh, tint it, right, to green and red. Um, there's a couple different ones here. Um, uh, I don't find them particularly super useful. I'm gonna undo those. Um, so, uh, but that is something if you needed to. So I, I have used these before in order to create, like I will duplicate a symbol and then um, take the color effect and use the brightness and the alpha um, in order to make it look like a shadow. And so it can be useful in that regard. Um, there's also the blend modes here, which will be a little more prominent. If I actually put this over top, you can see here's the different blend mode. So we can do like multiply, um, it, it follows the same basic rules that you would expect of um, uh, inside of Photoshop, right? I don't think there's any major differences. Um, and then the last one here would be the filters. And if you click on these, like I said, they, they look mostly like layer styles than they really are filters. Um, really common one would be like drop shadow. So you can do drop shadow and then I could adjust the distance here to have it go a little bit farther down and I could blur it a little bit more blur this a little bit more and take the strength and maybe weaken it so it's not so strong right and then you can see now it has a drop shadow so you know it'd be good, useful for buttons and things um so those are just some options that you have as far as uh that is concerned um the only the one thing i would say is this generally speaking i try not to use them it will work sometimes but it doesn't work for all outputs so for example we're gonna like so last week last two weeks or whatever, the output was video, right? And it's been video for the most part at this point. We're just creating uh, video content. But later on, we were gonna start making content for the web, right? It'll be HTML. So some of those filters will work with that and some won't work with video. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is if you do wanna try them out, I would try it real quick and then export out in whatever the format is that you wanna try. Um, and then if you like it, uh, and if it works, then go ahead and use it. But don't try to make it a main crux of whatever your project is.